Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson nine of the platform specific series of my ARM assembly programming tutorials. We're on the Game Boy Advance and the NDS again, this time the Nintendo DS, and this time we're looking at sprites. Now, you can see what looks pretty similar to last time, the time map example, it's the same code basically from that example we've got it scrolling away but now we've got these static objects in front of it and these are hardware sprites and you can see we've got three of them well what have we got well you can see here we've got this um, rectangular one which is using two tiles from the tile map two paths from the tile map although the data is different there's two actual memory areas but the format is the same so the 16 color sprites we can use the same type of tile pattern data so that's what we've done there this is a 16 color sprite, I think. I might have got it the wrong way around. And this is a 256 color sprite. Uh, I say, it might be the other way around. But basically, we've got two 16 color sprites, one of which, which is a rectangle, and we've got one 256 color sprite. And we've got the example running on the Game Boy Advance. And the Nintendo DS, it's the same example again, with just the initialization slightly different. So again, we can run our example on both systems. Now, just like last time, if you want to create your own data for the example today, you can do so with Acro Sprite Editor. This is the sprite you saw. And if you go to the ARM lesson section here and GBA, these say 4 bit per pixel, 8 by 8 tiles slash sprite, or 8 bit per pixel, 8 by 8 tiles slash sprite, are what I use to create the 16 color and 256 color data for today's example. So you can download Acro Sprite Editor, the example source code, and the example sprite files to run and modify the, today's example, and maybe you can do something with it. I hope you can. So that's um, what we're going to be looking at. Let's go over to the source code and let's have a look at today's example. And let me just get to the top of the code. Okay, so here we've got the example for today. Um, parts of it are fairly similar to before. There's just a few new extensions. So we're going to skip over the stuff that's relating to the tile map because we looked at that last time. So if you need to know how the tile map works, please see the previous episode of this, which we covered the tile map. Today, we're going to be looking at the sprites. So that starts just here. Now, we're going to discuss both versions at the same time because most of it's pretty similar. There's just a few slight quirks here and there. Now, the first thing to note is, although the screen I had set up was just using the same colors, um, actually, the palettes are totally separate. The palettes for the tile map are at 5 million. The um, palettes for the sprites are at 5 million to double zero in hexadecimal. So uh, what we're having to do is we're using our same LDIR command, which is just a... Um, data transfer command that works in half words because um, the Game Boy Advance and Nintendo DS VRAM doesn't like bytes being written to it. It does weird things. So we're working in 16 bit half words because that's the minimum it works well in. And we're going to transfer our palette and our palette is in the same format as for the um, tile map. Color zero is actually transparent for sprites. It's the same as before. Five bits blue, five bits green and five bits red. And you can see our colors defined there. So that's what we're going to do. And um, if, if you actually need to, you can also export colors from Akersbyte Editor. You've got here palette to clipboard that will export the current palette to the clipboard and then you can paste it in, which is surprise, surprise, exactly what I did. It, basically, Akersbyte Editor is my toy that I just extend with every crazy function I need for my tutorials or my programming projects, which is why it's a bit confusing and a bit of a mess in places, but it is very capable. Anyway, that's um, how we created our palette and we have to transfer our palette. As I say, we're using LDIR, two bytes, per palette entry, 16 palette entries. So that's what we're doing there. Okay, now what we want to do next is define the patterns that we're using for our sprites. Now we're using the same bitmap data for our sprites as our tiles, at least to a certain extent. The um, 16 color tiles that we used in the background in the tile map can be used for sprites. We are doing with that rectangular one. Um, we've got our 16 color sprite here and we've got a 256 color sprite here and we're including them all together in this block here. Now, the address we have to transfer our pattern data to um, is at a different address, though. So um, it's actually different on the um, Game Boy Advance and the Nintendo DS. It's at 6 million and 10,000 on the Game Boy Advance, but it's at the 6 million 400,000 on the Nintendo DS. It's a different address, which is like, well, fair enough. That's the way we have to do things. Um, the same as before as well on the Nintendo DS, we need to turn on some video memory. If we don't turn on the video memory, we will have a bad time. Now you can see here, um, we have, firstly, it looks like my um, window appears getting a bit confused with its scaling, but we'll just ignore that. You can see here, everything's working fine. But if I forget to turn on my video memory, we have no sprites. So don't forget to turn on your video memory and then we can use our sprites. So our sprite pattern memory is at this address here on the Nintendo DS, or this one here on the Game Boy Advance, but the graphics format is the same. So once we've got our destination address, we specify our source and calculate our length here. 
and we just transfer them with the same LDIR16 command that we're using for basically everything else. Now we want to turn our sprites on and um, here we have to discuss an interesting idea here. So the command here is different depending on the system. We're using this 4 million address here, but you can see here that the position of the bits to do the job are slightly different. And we've got this extra display on option here. Now we're setting sprites to on, the background layer on, and we're say, defining a 1D tile layout for our sprites. Now what does this mean? Well, you can see here, we've got this example here. Now, if we've got a sprite like this one here, and I will just do something here, which we'll explain in a moment. So this is the sprite that we want to show on the screen. Now, the sprites are made up of eight by eight blocks and the tile pattern size on the Nintendo DS and the Game Boy Advance. So if we want to create this and we want to show it to the screen, we're gonna to need to use a total of four numbered sprites to show it. Now, what should the numbers of those four sprites be? Should they be one, two, three, and four? Or should this be part of a bigger sheet that will contain lots of sprites and they won't be actually numbered consecutively based on the parts of that object? One way of counting things would be that these are one, two, three, and four. But the other way of counting things would be that all of this screen would be separate sprites and these would be one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So this would be something like one, two, 33, and 34. And that is basically the pair of options. Now my AcroSprite editor can actually sort of convert these things if I just go to here, this tile copy option. This is actually for tile maps, but it's great for showing an example of what this is. So the way I'm using things is one dimensional mode. So this two tile by two tile sprite is actually represented in memory in this format. And this it breaks everything down into eight by eight blocks. Whereas I say the other way would be to have things like this and you'd have lots of different versions maybe of this sprite all next to each other. But I find the 1D mode more straightforward. So that's what I'm using in my example. So 1D mode breaks things up into tiles so that a two by two tile is split up into four and they become consecutive in memory. Whereas 2D mode saves the tiles as part of a giant sheet and the numbering is not is consecutive along the entire sheet, not consecutive throughout each individual sprite, which is to say is not the way I prefer, but I'm not saying that the way I prefer is the better way. It's just the way that we're using in this example. Now, we can actually show the difference if we turn off the functionality, because you'll see things will go horribly wrong. We can try that. So um, if we just do that here. So here is the example code here. If we run this on the Game Boy Advance, you can see this is running quite nicely and you can see these are two by two. But if I now take out this four here and I change this to a zero here, well, now you can see half the tiles have vanished. And that's because, as I say, the, the next part is no longer tiles three and four. It's now going to be something like 33 and 34. And the, the bitmap data hasn't been stored in the file in the correct format for that. So really, it's just a question of un understanding how the um, format, the 1D, 2D format is expecting the bitmap data and making sure you transfer it into VRAM in the matching format. So that's, uh, as I say, we're using 1D mode here. Um, the rest of the, say, the settings are just turning the background on and turning the sprites on. The address is different and there's a slight difference to the position of the settings, but the settings we're using are exactly the same in both cases. Now, we're going to want to actually show some sprites on the screen. So I've created a little function called set sprite. And that's what this is. And so this is going to transfer the bytes of data that define a sprite into the memory locations for that sprite number. Now this system, I believe, can have 128 sprites, which is a heck of a lot, and they can be different sizes. There's various ranges of sizes here. Now you can see here on the screen here, each sprite is defined by three words, so six bytes. And there's two remaining bytes unused after each sprite, which I believe are actually related to the rotation options, which I don't know how to use, so I'm not going to cover here because I don't know how to use them. And uh, they're beyond what I probably plan on covering anyway, because to be honest, I'm more used to 8-bit systems and rotation is some crazy dream we didn't have. So um, uh, this is really the limit of my interest in graphics on these classic systems, to be honest. So um, as I say, we're not going to be covering that at this stage. So each sprite has six bytes used, but they are on eight byte boundaries. So the first sprite is at seven million. The second sprite is at seven million and eight. The next one is at seven million and ten. These are all in hexadecimal, so I always do things in hexadecimal. I should explain that. So um, you can see here an example of the addresses and the bits for sprite zero here. And you can see the, the main bits we're gonna be looking at are the Y position on screen here, the X position here, the shape of the sprite here, um, 
And sprites can be square or they can be rectangles and that's double width or double height. So that's what the shape is for. Um, the size is defined here. They can be 8x8, 16x16, 32x32 or 64x64. And with that rectangle option, your 8x8 sprite will become a 16x8 sprite or an 8x16 sprite. So that's the extension option we have there. We can horizontally and vertically flip sprites. We can select a color palette for 16 color mode. And we can select a priority, although uh, if you want it above the background, you want the priority zero there. And we can select a tile pattern number, and that's within our sprite VRAM for our patterns, our sprite patterns. So we've got these options here, and then as I say, there's two bytes after that that are unused. So what I've done here with this set sprite is I've just made a nice simple routine here. We pass this a number, um, zero for sprite zero, one for sprite one, and so on. And then we send three words, R1, R2, and R3, for the settings that we want to define for that sprite. And basically all it does is it sets the sprite base, seven million here, it um, multiplies the sprite number by eight by doing three bit shifts to the left and then it adds that up. And then that's the memory just for the first 16 bits, the half word of the sprite that we need to transfer. And then we just transfer all three um, definitions for the attributes of that sprite. So this will quickly set a numbered sprite for us. And that's what we're gonna use just here. So we're gonna set these sprites. And this is now identical for both systems. The memory address for defining the sprite settings is the same, it's just the pattern data address that was different. So we've got three examples here. Here's our first example. We're gonna create a 16 color sprite that's two by two tiles. So that's 16 pixels by 16 pixels. So we've got our Y address defined here. We're defining a one here, which says 16 by 16. If that was a zero, it would be eight by eight. You can see now we've just got a little kind of a chunk of that because it's too small now. And if we change this to one zero, well, um, now it's going to be 32 by 32, but we've not got enough data. So it's kind of got mushed up there. But as I say, very simple there. So that's how we're defining the size. As I said before, these are the oblong options. If I put a one here, um, again, things are going to get messed up, but now it's become a rectangle there. So um, say we can um, change the size within some limitations there. We've got the X position here as well, and we've got the tile number here. So this has to, of course, match the bitmap data that we've transferred over, which um, hopefully it does. Um, you can select the color palette here. I'm just using color palette zero and the priority here. Zero is at the top in front of that background. So that's what we're using there. So that's a 16 color sprite. Now the color is defined by this bit here. I can just show you that if I enable that here, uh, our sprite has got completely mushed up because now the color information is wrong. You can see actually the part of the valid 256 color sprite is just snuck in there. Um, so that's how we change the color. So this is a 16 color sprite. And here we're defining another 16 color sprite. This time though, we are setting it as an oblong. You can see we're just setting that here, which is setting the width and we're turning that into an oblong and that's creating this oblong object here. If I change that from a four to an eight, well now you can see it's an oblong in that direction instead. So we, we can configure it to be either direction here. So that's how we can create non-square sprites. Now we can't create one that's 32 tiles tall and one tile wide. We'd have to um, chain sprites together, you know, use multiple sprites and, uh, and position them so they were all lined up if we needed to do that. But that's the 16 color sprites. And then what we've done here is we've used a 256 color sprite. And um, we've done that just by defining the color bit with this two here. and. Um, Again, we're just selecting the tile position now. Now the tiles for this 256 color sprites and the 16 color sprites are actually intermingled in the same bank. So they're actually kind of sharing the same memory space. But of course the pattern data for 256 color sprite is gonna take twice the memory space of the 16 color one. But anyway, there we go. So that's how we can show the sprites to the screen using that set sprite function. And this is gonna make it pretty easy for you to get started and have a bit of a play with, uh, you know, repositioning your sprites here. You can move them around. And uh, just to say, if, if you wanted to extend this and you know, put joystick input in and then make one of the sprites move around, you're gonna be able to do that. And of course, because we can specify the sprite number that we want to change, this is sprite zero, this is sprite two, and this is sprite one, you know, we can, um, we can move things around pretty easily. Now, um, I, one thing I should probably point out if you're not familiar with this, um, we can't position the same numbered sprite in two positions on the screen. Um, because they're hardware sprites, so it's not like bitmap drawing that you can draw a bitmap here and then draw a bitmap here. If we try and position hardware sprite two here and here, the second one, the, the second redefinition will move the sprite and it will cease to exist in the original location. 
Um, I'll just show you what I mean by that. So if I show this sprite number four at this location here, you can see it now, there's now two sprites on the screen. But if I change this and instead of using sprite number four, I reuse sprite number two, well, it's disappeared from this location. So if you want to move a sprite, all you need to do is use this command again, uh, use the same sprite number and give the new location. And if you want to show a different sprite, you need to use a different sprite number each time. And as I say, the Game Boy Advance and the Nintendo DS have 128 of these sprites. So you've got plenty and you can't really complain. You know, some of us have to work on systems that have eight sprites and um, we, we don't have very many and we, we struggle quite a lot. So um, as I say, th these, um, these 32-bit systems are a bit too advanced for me. I'm used to I'm used to simpler things, but uh, I know a lot of people love the um, love the Game Boy Advance and the ARM and things, and I totally in, in understand that. It's just I'm I'm used to the more basic ones. So my um, my coverage of these tutorials is possibly a little bit more limited. But as I say, I, I spend so much of my time on Z80s and 68000s and strange things like that that I don't necessarily have as much as I as people maybe would prefer for me to have on these more modern ones. Anyway, that's what we're going to be covering today. Um, as always, go to my website, download the source code, download Aquasprite Editor and download everything else and um, the build scripts as well. Compile it and have a go and um, hopefully you can make something good out of it. As I always say, you're welcome to use anything on my website in whatever way you manage to benefit from it because that's why it's there. Anyway, if you've liked this video, please hit the like button and maybe hit the subscribe button as well because all of that helps me out. If you like the videos, YouTube recommends them or more people find them and then they like them as well or maybe they don't, but at least they watch them. Anyway, thanks for watching today. If you've enjoyed this video today, please consider supporting my content. It takes 20 to 30 hours a week to keep making these videos. It's basically all I do when I'm not doing my day job and it's only through the support of my patrons and the other sponsors that I'm able to continue Justify doing it essentially. You can back me on Patreon. I post a weekly update with the latest work on the current projects I'm doing. You can see one here and also the newest videos. There's a large backlog of videos that are currently only available to the patrons, although they will all be available to everyone later on. And also it's the backers who I ask when it comes to making decisions on how to change the content in the future, what new content to create and things like that. You can see there was recently a survey of the backers so I can plan next year's content. As well as Patreon, you can now become a member of my channel on YouTube. There's a join button you should see just below this video. You can use that. YouTube backers get the same content as Patreon. I just post it through the YouTube interface instead of the Patreon one. It's the same content every week. Also, if you prefer, you can go to my Teespring store and you can get some Chibi Akamas merchandise or some Learn ASM merchandise if you prefer, if that's how you'd like to back me. Links for all three are in the description of this video below. Uh, anyway, whatever you decide to do, I hope you've really enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.